This is Twit. The big advantage that I see with ARM is that you're going to, as a developer, you're going to be able to develop applications that run. It's going to be easier to run the catalyst type, you know, situations where you're, I'm, I'm going to write an app that runs on the, on the phone, it runs on the iPad and it runs on the air. Let's just say like, that's the first place where that makes a lot of sense for the developer and for the user to, to have, um, you know, something that's going to easily run and have a un unified interface. And theoretically, I think that this is where we would probably see laptops that you can have, you can touch their screen. <laughs> so, you know, so, so yeah. I think that this is where we're going to probably see um, touch interfaces on the laptops is the arm based ones um, is where we're going to see that where they're not going to do it on the older, the heavier machines. But I, I think that in three to five years, I think it makes sense to unify the code base and unify the, the hardware, but I don't think they're going to do it. I think that you're going to give developers a lot of warning. It's a big shift. There's no, and there's no reason to go any faster. Yeah, but that's that's the kind of opportunity that I'm speaking of. That even if Apple is absolutely at, absolutely sticks to its dogmatic approach towards, hey, there is no such thing as a touch screen on a Mac. Even if they just simply took the form factor of the iPad, created a MacBook Air or MacBook Helium, something lighter than there, that is <laughs> super super thin, super super long battery life, docks into a Magic Keyboard, and is simply a uh, a Mac that could be docked into a Magic Keyboard when you're on the go, and then pulled out of that, then dropped into a desktop dock uh, like a, like an old duo and give you a more uh, more uh, liberal array of ports that would be incredible because one of my as I'm sort of I, I am in the position right now where I I have to update a lot of things I have to update my laptop right now I also have to update my desktop right now which means that I'm really looking for a holistic uh, together, all together sort of plan. And if Apple were to create a computer like that, where I would have that sort of ultra portability that now I rely on for my with my iPad or with my uh, my uh, Google Pixel Chromebook, uh, but I could also use it for real Mac stuff. I don't. I wouldn't particularly care that buying that plus the Magic Keyboard would cost me twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. It would be such a beautiful solution to that problem. Uh, I, I wouldn't even care that it's an arm. But the the difficulty is going to come when you have people who don't necessarily don't need something who need something that is way above an iPad, way above essentially a, 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 a Chromebook uh, with a V8 on it. Uh, you have to there are people who uh, use Excel to run really, really complex models. And the, the difference between needing 30 seconds and run, needing five seconds is a really, really big deal. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing that I fear is that Apple is going to create a new platform that is going to be great for not even 80 or 90 percent of the users, but great for only 80 or 90 percent of what people do. And all of a sudden, 10 uh, percent of what you do on a Mac is going to be utter hell for at least three or four or five years. And I hope that's not the result, but it's a really complicated uh, transition they're, they're, they're planning here. And, they're, and their goal is going to be to make sure that the users don't notice as much of a difference at all. Yep. Well, I, yeah, all right, we'll see. I think there's probably no technical reason they couldn't do it faster. It really comes down to market considerations they have. I don't think they'll ever do touch on a desktop. I think that they want to keep touch on uh, the iPad because uh, that's where it properly belongs. They're making the iPad more and more of a computing system. I expect mm -hmm. uh, them to put a lot of energy into iOS and iPad OS. Uh, and the Mac is really going to be for pros, uh, which means they don't have to move along that fast. But I think there's some, I think there's just some uh, advantage to, to using momentum and moving quickly. They also are not happy with Intel. And I, no. <laughs> I don't think they want to do one more day making computers around Intel's crappy chips. Yeah, I, I think that they're going to, I, I just think that the, the for the heavier pro apps, it's going to be a big lift and, is it, and it's going to take a long time. Is it going to be rewrite those, you think? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be really hard. And so, and they, and, and for the, a lot of these pro apps, you can't, um, uh, it's going to be hard to emulate them as well to, and still get the performance. You can't, for instance, you can't really run a lot of these apps in parallels or in, right. you know, those types of things because, and so that emulation isn't, isn't going to be a great experience for the user. So I think that that's going to take a little bit of time, but I do think that, um, over the next year of having an air, uh, able to do a lot of those things, I think makes sense. I'm also really interested in seeing AR. I'm interested in, I'm, I mean, the thing that I'm most excited about, and I think it, it could largely be something that, I see what's possible and I'm hoping that they do it as opposed to knowing whether they're going to do it or not. And, and that's right, really, right. I think, I think that USDZ is the most exciting thing that Apple's working on. I mean, it could change many, many things. Um, you know, we've been talking about a unified 3d platform to deliver assets for two decades at least. 
you know, and, and so they, if, if they actually get to a point where they can reach critical mass, and that means the, the possibility of having a media container that is a 3D model. So I want to add something as a developer or if I want to add or and as a user, I want to add something that being able to add a 3D model to your pages document or your keynote document or your Word document um, as easy as you can um, add it to uh, as a movie or a still or anything else. You know, that's what the possibility of 3D USDZ is, is that it's the OS is taking taking all that conversion and all that display. And it was we saw bits of that in QuickDraw 3D a long time ago inside of QuickTime, but that all went away as QuickTime was gutted, you know, and so the the possibility of having USDZ as as this format, if you can imagine, and then if you combine that with the LIDAR that we've only, p people barely understand what that LIDAR is for, um, so it, it doesn't make sense yet. So hopefully WWDC is gonna make sense of that for us to some degree mm -hmm. of, um, you know, all the things that, you know, being able to do scene not only scene capture, but asset capture. So I have an object that I want to put as a 3D object into my pages document or in my keynote that I want to be able to rotate around. What if I could just pick up my iPad and rotate that object in front of my iPad real quickly and have a 3D model and then pop it into my keynote and be able to rotate it around as I show it to folks. And that's not science fiction. That That is the kind of thing that that could be very well possible or email someone a 3D model, you know, after I shot it with my iPad or, you know, eventually other hardware. And so, so I think that there's, um, there's a lot of opportunity there that to just change the way we think about a lot of documents. Um, I think that as we see, you know, a lot of iBooks flowing into, into um, pages, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to build really interesting documents that, Right now, lowest common denominator solutions like PDF and and eBooks have not been able to uh, um, really capture that Apple could still. I think I never thought I would say that ten years after they figured they they start they started it, they might actually come back to it and be able to redefine you the that, format. You saw that they're killing iBooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but page, it's because Pages has almost everything. Pages does it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I'm know, actually and, and hotter couple, about them killing iTunes. You that one peeves me, but. Mm -hmm. That's not for another yeah, so, year and a half. So yeah. So, but I think that there's 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 opportunities there to to really change the way we we learn um, I wonder, and, and the I, way we send stuff to people. I wonder if Apple's worried about blurring the lines between iPad OS and Mac OS. If no, I think they're encouraging it. They want it to blur. Yeah, I think I, they need it to yeah. blur. Yeah. So that ultimately there'd be one platform. This is a yeah. not yeah. no no not not ultimately one platform, but to make make a less messy platform uh, pair of platforms for themselves. They want they I think that ultimately they want the uh, the iPad, the iPhone, and a Mac to go together about as well as an iPhone and, and an Apple Watch. They uh, they want these things to be considered to be almost the same device with the same experiences between the two, even if the the operating systems that underlying underlying each of them has certain things that the that is optimized for one task and not the other so i i don't i would be very very surprised if they ever consolidated it down into mac ios mac waste like a, a greek name what <laughs> uh brand of greek yogurt uh, but i do think that we're going to see more constrictions uh, restrictions being put on what you can do on a mac uh with the perceived benefit being that your Mac will work more intimately with your uh, with your iPad and the experience of one is going to be easier to transfer to the other. There's a uh, interesting post from famed Apple leaker Fudge <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Reddit. He actually tweeted the Ac our MacBook future is coming maybe sooner than people expect. But his timeline actually is fairly slow. He says, Four stages. I don't know if he knows anything or he's just predicting. Starting around, well, this says 2015. Oh, I guess he means start, it's already he's, started because the T1, it. T2 yeah. chip. We're already in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, release of the T1 chip MacBooks, then the T2 chip MacBooks. Release of at least one lower end ARM MacBook. That would be maybe this year or next. And then transitioning the full lineup to ARM around 2023 to 2025. So he also is talking a three to five year. Uh, and, and it's not saying anything we actually all haven't all said in, yeah. in some form or fashion. So um, it's it's a long read, but maybe worth reading uh, to clarify. And, it's, and I think I think that's that's the pace that it would make the most sense. I mean, whether cadence. he's right or not, I think that the three to five year uh, pace of you know, constantly updating those things and giving developers plenty of time to to work on their development and um, and selling it. I mean, it's a this is a huge. This only happened on the Mac platform a couple of times, and so 
um so it's it's a big jump that needs to be done very carefully.